Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to round 11 coverage of the U.S. Chess Championships taking place in St. Louis, Missouri. Round 11 was the final round and um, there was no need for uh, tie breaks after this. Everything was wrapped up after this round. So this will be my, uh, my last video on these uh, championships. For round 11, I wanted to take a look at the game between uh, Irina Crush with the white pieces and uh, Nazi Paikidze with the black pieces. Um, Let's set the scene a little bit. Nazi Paikidze is uh, still in the running for the, uh, the championship, the women's championship. She's just a half point behind Tatev Abrahamian, but being a half point behind means she certainly has to uh, go for the win to have a chance of, uh, of uh, having a share of that title. Irina Krush, the uh, previous champion, in fact, uh, Irina had won the championship four times in a row and, and seven times overall. Uh, and was one of the pre-tournament favorites, one of the two top-rated women players in the championship. Uh, didn't have such a great tournament. She's out of the running already, but uh, she would like to have a win. She has uh, the white pieces. She can prove that uh, she can take down one of the tournament leaders and, uh, and come out of this uh, with an okay performance. So both sides uh, looking to win. Irina plays, uh, starts with knight f3, knight c6. And uh, she goes for the reti opening with the g3. But it's uh, what she's playing is actually the king's Indian setup. So we'll, we'll get to that position in a little bit. After d5, c6. Uh, after bishop g2, c6. Uh, you know, black is setting up this uh, wall of pawns here to kind of blunt the effect of the bishop on this diagonal. Um, and white castles. Let's see, bishop to g4, putting a little pressure on that knight and maybe making it inconvenient to play the e-pawn, creating a pin, um, and d3. So this is, um, let's see, I think a standard reti would have uh, had the move c4 in there somewhere earlier, but uh, that's not Irina's idea. She's not going to play with uh, c4, but rather with e4, so that's what makes it a uh, king's Indian setup. And we'll get to that position in a couple of moves. Knight bd7, h3, kicking the bishop. The bishop drops back keeping the potential pen, and now queen to e1, just stepping out of the way and preparing to move the e-pawn forward. Uh, and black, uh, seeing what's coming, decides to get another pawn in the center with uh, e5. The knight here nicely supporting that pawn, and uh, e4. So we have the, this king's Indian setup from white, and um, Nazi Paikidze takes off one pair of pawns here. We have this uh, exchange, and develops her bishop to uh, c5. So. Both sides are doing fine out of the opening, um, and uh, this is a position that's been reached before. It seems like uh, black is doing okay here, uh, but uh, white also is doing fine. Um, the development is about even. White is castled, but still hasn't developed the queen side. Black still needs to castle, and this bishop probably has to move again. It's not maybe the best posting for that bishop. It's kind of looking at this knight, but uh, it's not pinning it anymore, so it's not doing a whole lot over there. So nothing... Nothing unusual has happened here, um, but the next move from Irina Crush, a4. So this is not in my opening book. This indicates a, a different kind of strategy of um, just pushing this pawn forward and weakening the uh, queenside pawns over here. And um, and also has another idea. We'll show that in a moment. Um, Nazi stops that idea of uh, pushing the pawn forward by just playing a4, preventing it from moving ahead. And now Irina plays knight a3. And so that was the other idea of pushing that a-pawn forward is now the knight is supported by the rook. So this uh, this exchange of bishop takes knight no longer undoubles the pawns there, or no longer doubles the, the uh, pawns on the queen side. So uh, all all nice. And the knight on a3 is just, uh, it's just a stepping stone to get to this uh, great square c4. So it's uh, somewhat of a closed setup. There There is one open file, which both sides can play for, but um, um, but it's not really a completely open position because there's there's time for white to maneuver the pieces like this. Um, anyway, Nazi plays uh, queen to c7, bishop to d2, um, b6. So bishop to d2 was threatening to take the uh, a-pawn. The, the knight and the uh, bishop were already coordinating, or the knight and the queen were already coordinating, and now with the bishop lined up, uh, and uh, Paikidze needs to defend that, so she plays b6, and now knight to h4. 
getting the knight out of the way of the f pawn and preparing to expand on the king's side with f4. So a very typical uh, play for the uh, king's Indian uh, attack. And it's just like a king's Indian defense reversed where, uh, where white is playing for the attack on the king's side and black can try and get some counterplay on the uh, queen side, maybe create some weaknesses over here. And it's interesting that, um, that Irina chose to play with this a4 move first, just uh, maybe trying to fix the structure a little bit on the queen side before uh, continuing with the king's side play. Anyway, rook f to e8 was played, shoring up the center here. King to h1, getting out of the way of this uh, dark squared diagonal so that the pawn can move forward. There was a, a pin on that uh, f pawn. Uh, bishop drops back to g6. The bishop was not doing a whole lot, as I said, on this diagonal. It's kind of looking into thin air, and now even the knight has evacuated that diagonal. So it just drops back to g6. And this does give um, Irina the chance to grab the bishop pair, which she goes for. Knight takes, pawn takes. So, um, so white has the the bishop pair and and uh, you know expansive plans on the uh, on the king side, which uh, she continues with f4. And so uh, if uh, if nothing dramatic is done here, uh, this is looking very promising for white. And it's still actually it's a position which is is really about equal with best play according to the chess engine. But it looks like uh, white is building up just a a fine uh, king side attack here with these pawns, and the chess engines sometimes overestimate these long-term creeping attacks. But uh, Nazi Paikidze right here finds a great move to um, kind of uh, reverse the trend. There's a certain trend uh, going on in this game where, where white is just building up slowly for this king side attack, and uh, and she finds a move that uh, kind of uh, slows things down, jams up the works somehow. So see if you can find the best move for black in this position. What would you play if you had the black pieces? Okay, uh, pause the video if you want some time to, to think about this position. I'm going to give the answer away. So, you know, one clue is that it's not a, uh, it's not like it's a winning move. Like I said, this position is still about even. But it is, uh, it's an interesting move, and it's actually a top engine choice here. And that's the move b5. So as as often is the case with the king's Indian, you know the the, uh, the side that's under attack has counterplay on the queen side, and uh, this is a pawn sack, but it it is opening up some lines over here on the queen side, and it's gaining some time too. So um, there's no reason not to take that pawn. Arena goes ahead and grabs it. That's the recommended move. You grab the pawn with tempo kicking the queen back. So what's the big idea? You, you can also trade off here, supporting the bishop. This bishop is now supported by the queen and the rook. The knight will have to move. So the knight drops back to d2. So that's one idea, is that uh, black gained a tempo by giving up that pawn and then uses the tempo to trade off this f4 pawn. And uh, and then, um, you know, Nazi Paikidze, she's not getting that pawn back. She plays on a pawn down for a long time in this game. Let's back up for a second to where that b5 move was played and look at another line here just to show uh, what other ideas are in the position. Uh, another choice, which is also a top engine recommendation for black, is to play uh, knight h5. Maybe trying to, uh, trying to put a little pressure on these uh, dark squares here, although those pawns are are defended. The queen's defending that and the bishop is that. And then white can continue her attack with f5. And after g takes f5, rook takes f5. And uh, in this position, even though, well, once again, the, the engine, the chess engine is evaluating all these positions as around even, but just uh, looking at this compared to what happened in the game, uh, white is so much more active. White has this uh, open f file. The material is even, but, uh, you know, white has a, a very fine looking position to my eye. It looks like um, there are a few awkwardnesses in, in White's position, I guess. The pressure on the g-pawn keeps the queen kind of tied down, and the queen can't jump up here to this square to defend uh, laterally because the bishop is controlling the dark squared diagonal. So it's not like black is without resources in this position, but somehow um, this starts to look like uh, uh, White's attack is going to be uh, coming through a little sooner and stronger than, than Black would like. So 
this uh, B5 move right here kind of reverses the course of the game in a way because as we go forward a few moves all this is pretty logical the queen has to move and then exchanging these pawns dropping the knight back you know the knight was under threat it had to move and uh, and then uh, and then Nazi Paikidze has time to take off the F pawn which uh, temporarily at least stops the F pawn from coming forward and um, this position, uh, Black's pieces are just a little more active than what we saw in the previous position. So, uh, but is that activity worth the whole pawn? That's the question. Um, so, uh, it, well, it's uh, Nazi's move, and she continues uh, in a, a tactical fashion with knight to d5, taking advantage of this uh, pin. So, uh, continuing also with this theme of uh, acting, evading her pieces, and getting them out. Um, and the, the knight's threatening to come in here to... Uh, d3, which would be kind of annoying, so the rook comes up to f3. Not entirely a happy move, although it, it seems fine, um, you know, technically. Looking at it from the chess engine point of view, it seems like there's nothing wrong with it, but it, <laughs> it seems like uh, it's the beginning of some kind of awkwardness in, in White's position. You know, the rook is actually blocking the bishop, so it's not really uh, ideally the way he would like to place your pieces, I guess that's what I would say. Not the most natural-looking piece placement. And now uh, uh, Nazi Paikidze plays the, the very interesting move, f5. Just uh, pushing her pawn to f5 before white can get in that break. It's actually not the recommended move from the engine. The engine points out that uh, you can uh, get the pawn back, and it likes uh, this, this uh, line for uh, black, which is uh, knight to f6, bringing the knight to f6, and then, um, say, queen to f1 to unpin, so that pawn can move forward, and knight takes e4, just getting the pawn back, and I think uh, black is doing pretty well in that line. Um, if white tries pushing on with e5, which seems pretty natural, it's uh, not actually threatening the knight. Um, so the knight doesn't have to move, but the chess engine likes to move knight to uh, h5 here, and also rates this position as good for black. So uh, pretty interesting. Black didn't get, uh, did not get the um, pawn back, but then the knights are uh, looking at all of these uh, dark squares in um, in white's position. It looks like uh, keeping keeping white kind of tied up there. So f5, although not technically the best move, is, is pretty interesting and different way of playing it. Um, e5, I mean, it seems like uh, it's, it's just uh, um, giving up another advantage to um, to white. So white Look at, look at all the advantages white has. White has the bishop pair, white has an extra pawn, and white has a, now a protected passed pawn. And uh, what does black have? Uh, well, the <laughs> black's pieces still, it's, it's, that's the answer. The black's pieces are very active. And, uh, and Nazi Paikidze pushes on with g5. And now we're at move um, 24 here, and I think uh, both players may have been rushing a little bit at this point because... Um, you know, you've got uh, 16 moves to make the time control as the clock starts ticking down. In any case, Irina makes a, a little mistake here and uh, takes the pawn. And taking the pawn is a way of uh, giving back some uh, material, giving the pawn back to get out of trouble and try and unwind. But it somehow doesn't quite work out. So the, uh, the chess engine line goes like this. The recommended moves for white here would be b4. Let's see. It's, it's after g5. Yeah, black played g5. White could play b4. Um, defending this bishop, kicking this bishop. This bishop uh, drops back. Um, doesn't have a lot of great squares. Bishop to f8, the chess engine likes, after some thought. And now, um, having kicked that bishop off the dark squares, the queen can go to the f2 square, which was not available, and uh, just kind of pile up on the, um, on the f file here. Black can grab a pawn, so this is also a way of giving back a pawn so that the material becomes even, but it um, leaves um, white with some better pieces. Now rip to d3 is finally unblocking the bishop, and they're coordinating on that knight. The knight can grab a pawn, so, <laughs> so black will um, uh, get another pawn this way. And so white, white ends up sacrificing a pawn, I guess, in this line, but then the rook can come over to... Um, a3 and set up some threats along this diagonal. So this was kind of a, a long sequence, but actually this ends up 
um, because of the tactical threats here. There's a threat of taking this uh, knight, and after bishop takes, then you take the rook, and if uh, rook takes, then you take, <laughs> does that work? Um, oh yeah, yeah, if rook takes, then you can uh, take back with the bishop and it's defended. So so it actually wins a piece in that line or the exchange. So so black is, is uh, losing the exchange here for the pawn. And that was the line recommended by the chess engine for best play for white. But, uh, well, that's a pretty complicated line, maybe a little bit difficult to find in, uh, in a little bit of time pressure. And f takes g5 at first seems to fit the same bill, you know, um, give up some material here and, uh, and give, give up a pawn, basically, and, and try and free up the pieces. So knight takes e5, and then the rook drops back to f2. And the important point here is that when the rook came to f2, this uh, bishop is hitting the knight. So the, the rook is getting out of the way of the bishop, the knight is loose, and um, there is no time to take the rook here, you might think, well, you take the rook with an attack on the queen, but you take the knight with check, so uh, so you can't, uh, there's no time to grab the rook. Um, and in this position, um, knight to e3 was played, which is a good move. But there's actually a stronger tactic here. So uh, this is a uh, tactics quiz for you. Can you spot the tactic for black in this position? Okay, the move uh, knight to d3. Yeah, this knight coming to d3. Not not a move you might think of right offhand because, of course, the d3 square is guarded by the pawn. But it comes with a, a an attack on the queen. And if the queen moves, then you can uh, then you can grab this rook with check. The knight takes the rook, comes with check. So that is just a, a winning tactic. Um, but uh, well. This is why I said maybe they were they were running short on time. Knight to e3 is something that um, just gets that knight out of trouble and also keeps a winning advantage for black and uh, without going into so many complications. So maybe just uh, Nazi was just playing for a simpler a simpler way to maintain the win. Anyway, uh, white played uh, knight to b3 here, defending defending this bishop, attacking this bishop. Um, knight takes g2 is played grabbing this uh, important uh, defensive piece from around the king, rook takes, and now um, f4, pushing the f pawn forward. Not worried about um, losing this uh, dark squared bishop to the trade at this point. Um, the, the pin on the, the bishop might be awkward, I guess. Um, so anyway, queen to, um, queen to c3 was played, putting more pressure on the bishop. Um, the knight goes to c4, blocks the view of the queen, and prepares to hop into uh, this uh, dark square here, which has been prepared by this uh, f-pawn push. So nice play, nice maneuvering play. Uh, the queen comes over to f3, stopping this pawn from uh, coming forward any further, putting some pressure on it. Uh, the queen goes to f5, defending the pawn and activating the queen. And now uh, knight takes c5. And um, queen takes c5. So that bishop was still protected by the queen there. And uh, b4 was played here. Yeah, defending the bishop, kicking the queen. Queen goes back to f5. And rook to f2. So for the moment, it seems like um, white has kind of unwound a little bit. You'll notice that through all of this, through all the complications, black has remained a pawn down. So white has kept her one pawn plus and uh, is trying to get those pieces organized. I guess the one problem piece in the position now is this uh, bishop over here, which is defended by a pawn, so the rook is free to move, but it, well, it's difficult to maneuver this bishop and get it into the game. So keep that in mind. Um, the rook comes forward to e4, preparing to uh, double. Uh, the rook comes over to g1, defending the king side. Now rook a to e8, doubling on the uh, e-file. And uh, bishop to c7 was played here, which appears to be the losing move. So the uh, the chess engine recommends king to h2, and then uh, and then black could continue with knight to e5, and uh, still uh, black is still a pawn down, but uh, still has an advantage actually with uh, 
black's pieces swarming around white's king but no immediate breakthrough so the game would continue let's back up what uh, Irina Kresh played in this position was bishop to c7 and uh, there's a very nice tactic here and uh, well there's a sequence of a few moves so see if you can spot the uh, tactical ideas in this position and uh, see how you would play what is the best move for black here Okay, uh, pause the video if you want some time to think about it. This is, like I said, it's a few moves deep, but uh, I think you could find it if you look for it, so um, it's worth looking at. Um, okay, I'm going to give the answer away now. Black continued. Nazi Paikidze played. Rook to e3, chasing the queen away. Pretty logical, but giving up the f-pawn. But that's not a, a pawn sack because the h-pawn goes with uh, check. So that's... Uh, Tactical idea number one, skewer that queen and grab the h-pawn. And also, by the way, that's why king to h2 in this position rather than bishop to c7 is a better move because it defends the h-pawn. So anyway, yeah, the game went bishop c7, rook to e3. The queen moves out of the way and grabs a pawn. Rook takes h3 check. And now, now white is in uh, a world of hurt. Actually, if, um, of course, if queen to e2 to block the check, then uh, that's just giving up material that rook takes queen. If rook to h2 blocking the check, then the queen goes to d5 and uh, and white gets mated. There's a, there's a mate <laughs> on the board in a few moves. So king to g2 is the only try, and that's what Irina played here. And now the final move, the final tactical idea uh, you had to see, or I wanted you to see, if you uh, see if you can spot the next move for black. That that really puts the nail in the coffin. The one and only move for black. Okay, I'm going to uh, give the answer away now. It's the knight e3 check. And we see uh, just this wonderful coordination of uh, black's pieces. You know, the rook defending the knight, the queen defending the rook. The king has no squares. <laughs> and so the only move is queen takes knight. Now this is a sacrifice of a queen for um, for rook and peace. So um, it's not entirely, uh, from a material point of view, it's not entirely over here. It's more about the position. Let's see, um, rook takes queen could have been played, but uh, queen g4 check I think is a bit stronger. The queen comes back to block. Now rook takes queen and uh, bishop takes and uh, rook to e3, piling up on the bishop. So if we pause here, it is uh, rook and bishop for a queen. Didn't mean to draw that arrow. Rook and bishop for a queen. And sometimes there are cases, and also a pawn. White still has that extra pawn. Rook, bishop, and pawn for a queen, which from a material point of view is uh, equivalent, or roughly equivalent. And um, sometimes there are ways for uh, white to set up a blockade here with the rook, bishop, and pawn. But in this position, uh, the king is exposed, the pawns are a bit scattered, and uh, there's also an extra pair of rooks on, so it's not a pure rook, bishop, pawn versus queen, but it uh, has the extra pair of rooks, which uh, gives the attacking side here with the queen a lot more possibilities. So um, let's see, the king went to h2. There's a long sequence of moves here where Nazi Paikidze is uh, moving her king, queen around, and uh, and gathering up pawns, which is what you do. You can deliver a bunch of checks, try and drive your opponent to uh, uh, a bad position. So we'll just kind of step step through this part because there's not a whole lot going on. It's just a bunch of checks and then gathering up some pawns. And then uh, now there's a bit of a reorganization of the pieces here. And uh, right here is where the, the final breakthrough occurs. Let's see, after rook to f3, um, she spots the idea. Um, you might want to see if you can find the move here, too. Okay, the, the cool move here is g5, chasing that bishop away and um, just opening up this uh, the um, path to the g4 square there. So after bishop takes g5, rook to g4, check. Uh, Irina resigned, and it's just game over. Although there is still, I have to say, there is still one uh, trick here. The king needs to move. 
uh, if it goes to uh, H2, it um, you know then uh, that just loses the rep. So the king goes to F2, and then it's a mistake to grab the bishop. You might think that was the idea was just to grab the bishop, but uh, well, watch this little tactic. It's always nice to, <laughs> it's always good to to look out for these tactics. Rook takes, queen takes and then rook to g3 and suddenly it's not a win anymore it's a draw because when the queens come out this turns out to be a drawn rook and pawn endgame <laughs> so uh, anyway the idea after uh, king to f2 is not to uh, not to grab the bishop but to uh, deliver the check here and um, the, after the king gets out of the way then you can grab that rook so that's just winning for uh, black. So uh, Irina didn't didn't bother to pose one last test for uh, uh, Nazi Paikidzi, but gave her credit for seeing that far ahead and uh, just resigned at this point. So fine victory for uh, for Nazi and uh, winning over one of the the strongest players in the tournament. A bit of an unfortunate result for Irina, but let's take a look at the standings now. So uh, uh, that with that win, Nazi Paikidzi won the tournament with a score of eight and a half. Um, Tatev Abrahamian actually lost her game. She was playing um, one of the younger players, Ashritha Eswaran, who actually played a really nice game, and uh, and uh, and so she lost. So that's how uh, Nazi Paikidzi came in clear first. No need for a tiebreak. So pretty exciting tournament overall. A, a good result for Tatev too, coming in at eight points in this strong field. The two pre-tournament favorites, uh, Anna Zatonsky and Irina Kresh, a little bit disappointed. <clears throat> and then um, the young players, uh, Ashritha Eswaran, Jennifer Yu, and Carissa Yip, in particular, can feel good about uh, um, the, the score that they managed to achieve uh, in this very tough field. So uh, good tournament all around, a lot of exciting play. Um, let's take a look at what happened inside. There was only one. Um, there was only one um, victory. One, all the all the games were drawn except for one on the men's side, and that was a win by uh, Caruana, who was uh, already leading the tournament. So with that victory, he was actually matched up uh, in the final round. Had the white pieces against uh, Akshat Chandra, who's uh, at, at the bottom of the tournament, not, not having a great tournament. And uh, so it was kind of a routine win for Fabiano. And uh, so his challengers, uh, Wesley So and Hikaru Nakamura, in the end, could not catch him. Uh, Wesley So had a great uh, tournament, uh, particularly at the start. He had a really strong start. But uh, at the end, Fabiano managed to pull away. And then Hikaru Nakamura had kind of a slow start and then made a challenge towards the end, and, uh, but uh, fell short in the final round. And uh, Ray Robson, I think, is another person who can be uh, happy with her, his uh, performance. Um, he's, he's one of the younger players here in a uh, very tough field. He came in fourth with the seven out of, uh, out of 11. So anyway, and among the young players, um, you know, Ray Robson, he's, he's sort of in between. He's not uh, not as old as these guys, but he's not as young as the, the juniors. Um, Jeff Zhang of, of the uh, juniors uh, had, a, had a great tournament. He ended up even. So one win, one loss, and uh, the rest draws, but in a very tough field. Really performed very well. And in fact, uh, he had a winning position in the final round against um, Alexander Shabalov. Had a possibility of finishing with a plus score but but at uh, one point he made a mistake and lost his winning chances so anyway um, nice tournament all around and there's going to be uh, one more uh, event in the St. Louis area coming up uh, Thursday and Friday of this week Gary Kasparov is in town and there's going to be a uh, blitz tournament uh, six round uh, double round robin with uh, the top three finishers in the U.S. Open. So uh, Caruana, So, and Nakamura, and uh, Gary Kasparov, the four of them are going to play a, a six-round uh, blitz tournament uh, Thursday and Friday this week. Should be a very fun event. Um, so that concludes my coverage of the U.S. Uh, chess Championship and U.S. Women's Chess Championship. 
uh, for 2016. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed this, and I will be going back to my usual fare of uh, Blitz Games and commentary, and I will uh, see you then.